There are many ways narcos move dope. Some of them are more inventive than others. Two groups using different methods were caught this week in a large probe in Canada, with one nest of gangsters in particular going to an awful lot of trouble, soaking textile fibers in cocaine in Colombia, and then using a clandestine lab near Toronto to extract it, turning it back into saleable blow. The mob reporter here with news of gangsters in and around Canada's largest city, engaged in a battle of wits, trying to find clever ways to sneak dope into North America, and who, despite some exceptional effort, found out the hard way that they lost. Let me tell you about it. The end came in a flurry of raids and arrests. The Ontario Provincial Police and York Regional Police, north of Toronto, announced Project Southam on July 15, 2021, an operation targeting significant international cocaine smuggling. And if it wasn't for a few of the guys allegedly working with both groups, it might well have been announced as two separate probes. But as it is, it was all wrapped up in one clamorous sweep involving 44 search warrants at 25 locations in Toronto and a dozen smaller cities and towns around it, including Mississauga, Hamilton, Brampton, Vaughan, and Oakville. Police allege two distinct organized crime groups ran high-volume smuggling and trafficking schemes, one importing cocaine from Colombia imaginatively concealed in textiles, and another flying cocaine from the Caribbean, as well as exporting illegal cannabis from Canada into the United States. The textile importation scheme seems a notch above the typical plot, which could best be described as dropping bricks of coke in the bottom of boxes of legitimate goods to export, and then covering them with bananas or pineapples or whatever else, and shipping it out hoping for the best. To be sure, a lot of those get through, but many are caught. It's basically a numbers game for the narcos, a game of chance, throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. But this one was more sophisticated, more refined. Literally and figuratively, it required chemistry. Sources suggest that cocaine was liquefied and imbued into the fibers of fabric, strands of which you can see here. The woven fabric was then exported to Canada as textiles. Once in Canada, more effort was needed to extract it back out from the fibers and once again make it a recognizable form of coke. Now I know many a junkie would happily suck on a blanket to get their hit, but that would be a harder sell for a lot of retailers, especially in nightclubs. And so a clandestine conversion laboratory was built to extract the cocaine hydrochloride from the textile fibers and reconstitute it into its saleable state. Six kilos of coke from this escapade were seized during the operation, please say. Now the second group nabbed in the operation is accused of plotting to fly coke in from the Caribbean, under mysterious circumstances, and also conspiring to export cannabis to the United States, likely using transport trucks, because some of those arrested had links to the trucking industry. Curiously, police say they seized 86 kilos of coke that the suspects were attempting to import on aircraft from the Caribbean. The suspects are accused only of conspiring to import cocaine. So where on the journey was it stopped? I don't yet know, but the federal agencies involved in the investigation were based at Toronto's main international airport, so presumably that was its destination. Police wouldn't even say what part of the Caribbean was involved. I'm not a genius, but arriving in these bags, I'm going to guess it's Jamaica. Senior investigators said they couldn't say more about it because this part of the probe is still ongoing, and they hope to make further announcements about it in the future. All in all, police arrested 21 people, with another considered a fugitive, for 22 people facing charges. Several of those arrested have a history of previous drug charges or suspected drug activity. Two were linked to a pharmacy in Hamilton, west of Toronto, that was raided by federal police some years ago for allegedly redirecting legitimate narcotics to the black market. A co-accused in that case was linked to the Musitano crime family, a once powerful mafia clan in the city. Investigators say they seized about $10 million worth of drugs. That consists of 92 kilos of cocaine, a kilo of meth, 
249 kilos of cannabis, more than a kilo of magic mushrooms, 21 liters of gamma hydroxybutyrate, 255 grams each of ketamine and ecstasy, and nearly a thousand oxycodone pills. They also seized a 9mm handgun, a silver bar worth a few thousand dollars, about $380,000 in cash, seven vehicles, including a nice looking BMW SUV, and a cryptocurrency wallet with an unknown balance. When police moved in on their targets, there was one suspect they couldn't find. Sukchit Dhaliwal was still a wanted fugitive at the time I'm recording this. He stands accused of conspiracy to export cannabis. His name was linked to a shocking drug-related kidnapping some 15 years ago. A transport truck driver was grabbed off the street and stuffed in a van at gunpoint by four men. A recording of the driver denying he stole 300 kilos of cannabis, as he was apparently smacked around, was later delivered to a Punjabi language newspaper. On that recording, the man was heard pleading that his children not be harmed. That captive later returned home in a taxi with no serious injuries, but a subsequent police raid on a house where he was allegedly held sparked a shootout, during which one suspect was killed and another injured. Those arrested in Project Southam are an ethnically diverse bunch, and with five of them being female, it also has more of a gender balance than is often seen. But the alleged involvement of Dhaliwal adds this case to a growing list of recent drug busts in southern Ontario involving Indo-Canadians linked to the trucking industry. Just a week before, Canada's border agency said they found this load hidden in a commercial truck driven by an Indo-Canadian truck driver crossing from Buffalo, New York into Fort Erie, Ontario. During a secondary inspection of the truck, five duffel bags were found brimming with 112 and a half kilos of suspected cocaine, police say. Now before you blast off in the comments, no, I can't explain why police say they seized five bags and then give me a photograph of four bags. The RCMP gave the seizure an estimated street value of $14 million. Last month, Toronto police announced the bust of a major international drug ring the largest ever in the city's history, that used transport trucks with specially constructed secret compartments to move large quantities of dope across the US-Canada border. Of the 20 people arrested in that project, codenamed Project Brisa, nearly half were of Indian origin. And in April, York police busted an international smuggling ring allegedly moving bulk product into Canada from India and California in Project Cheetah. Among those arrested were Indo-Canadian men linked to a transport truck company. I've told you some of these stories in previous videos, and I'll link to them here and in the description. Project Southam tells us a few other things as well. Once again, we see how the underworld needs the help of the upper world to truly thrive. A mortgage broker and the owner of a pharmacy help the gangsters launder their money, investigators say meaning turning criminal proceeds into accessible, respectable-looking, clean cash. Police allege drug proceeds were used to buy a $1.5 million house. The investigators made it clear that they hope to make further announcements stemming from Project Southam in the future, as more information is chased down and evidence is followed. It seems that just as with the fabric used to mask the cocaine, there are still some threads to pull. Thanks for watching.